Hello YouTube, Redneck Reloader here. Um, I'm going to make this video, uh, I'm kind of revisiting a subject I've already made a video on, uh, but I, I got so much feedback on it, I decided to make a little bit more in-depth video because a lot of people have questions. Um, I'm going to try to just speed through this. Um, I've been accused of being long-winded at times in my videos and, and in life, and I, I'm aware of that, so uh, I'm going to... Uh, to try to not be so bad in this video i have been cutting down 10 millimeter cases in order to load 40 smith and wesson and the reason i'm doing that is we are currently in an ammo and reloading supply shortage um worst i've seen uh in my lifetime since i've been in, uh, involved in uh, gun sports and the first thing that seemed to ran out was small pistol primers and small rifle primers. And I got caught a little bit flat-footed. I knew it was coming, and I stocked up on a lot of brass and a lot of bullets. If you look at my reloading bench here, I can hardly move. I've got so many bullets and stuff cluttered up around here. I had plenty of powder. I thought I had more primers than I did. So when I realized I was so short on primers, not like desperately short, but I just don't have nearly as much as what I wanted... It was too late. They were already sold out everywhere. Um, I haven't seen any small pistol primers in six months, at least. But I could still get large pistol primers uh, from my local gun store. They seem to have quite a few of those. And so my original plan to get through all this until everything gets restocked again is I would just um, use my small primers for my nine millimeter and because I have two nine millimeters both the pistol and a carbine so I shoot a lot of those uh, but just for practice shooting and stuff I said I'll just shoot my 45 ACP more and I'll use these large primers up but I also have a 40 cal that I carry every day and I like to use it uh, for practice and stuff so I wanted to be able to load 40 cal so I came up with the idea of just cutting these 10 millimeter cases down and this is a 10 millimeter case and a 40 millimeter case if uh if you're not familiar with them the main difference they're the exact same diameter but the 10 millimeter is longer and the 10 millimeter uses a large pistol primer instead of a small pistol primer so i made a quick video saying i was doing this and just touched on it briefly and i've had a lot of people come back and ask me questions about exactly how i'm doing it so i decided i'll make this video and kind of show you the procedure i'm using i had about 50 pieces of 10 millimeter brass i bought another 100 pieces uh, a couple weeks ago so i'm you know that's gonna give me about 150 i figure just for me going out plinking target practice and I can just kind of reload those. I'll see how it goes. I'll get more if I need it down the road. Um, the process I'm using is kind of laborious and not the fastest way. If you had thousands to change, you're not probably not going to want to do it exactly how I'm doing it. But it works for me and I'm not looking at doing a whole bunch of these. So um, let me get set up with camera and I'll show you what I'm doing. All right, those of you that have watched my other videos, you're probably going to notice I'm using a different press. Yeah, this is my second press, uh, my RCBS Junior. Uh, I'm using it today because uh, what I've done, I, I prime on the press using the priming arm. And if you change over from large to small primers, you have to change this little primer cup. And it's kind of fiddly, and it's spring-loaded, and I'm pretty klutzy, and I'm worried about losing them. So what I've done is this press, I keep a large primer cup on, and my main bear press, I keep the small primer cup on. And what I do is if I'm going to reload uh, anything with large primers, I just use this press. So it's just easier um, than having to switch the arms out. But it's a little awkward. You'll see me fumbling with it a little bit because it's on my left side, and I'm used to working on the right side. The other thing I'm going to do today is go ahead and set my dies up and show you exactly how I'm setting those up because I did that early on with a lot of my videos because the reason I started making videos is because I wanted more information like that that I wasn't finding in videos. And here lately I've noticed I've kind of quit going over how to set up the dies because I feel like it's redundant because I've done it in so many of my other videos. But then 
I have to remember that not everybody's seen all my videos. So I'm going to uh, assume you're a new reloader and I'm going to show you how to do this. So I'm using a three die set by uh, RCBS. The first die uh, is the decap and resizing die. This brass is once fired. It's still got the primer in it. I have to resize it and get the primer out of there. So and what I'm going to do is I raise the ram, put my shell holder in. I raise the ram all the way up. And I'm going to screw this die in until it just touches right here. Then I'm going to back it up just a little bit. I, I just, I don't mind it touching, but what you don't want is what they call cam over, where it touches and then you go further. Because this is a carbide die set and there's a carbide insert up inside there and you can break that, pushing the shell holder up into it. Now some dies, like my rifle die, I use small base uh, 223 dies for my AR-15. They want you to have some cam over, but these dies you don't. So you want that, and you want the decapping pin down a little bit. Uh, you don't want to stick it down too far. It's easy to bend them and break them. Um, they say right in here the pin should stick out about the thickness of two quarters underneath. I, I tend to do that every once in a while. I'll hit a case where it doesn't want to deprime, and I have to screw it down a little further just to get the primer out. But, and these are carbide dies, so I don't have to use any lube. So I'm just going to set the case in, run it up in there, and that's going to resize it and pop out the primer. So now it's resized, deprimed. Okay, the next step I'm going to do is now I'm going to trim the case down to the proper length. To do that, I'm going to use my Lee Quick Trim Deluxe. Now, um, the Deluxe model has some extra blades in it to chamfer and deburr the case, but I've actually removed those because I found that this 10 millimeter brass is kind of thick walled, and those were actually doing the cutting instead of the cutting blades, and they were really roughing up the edges, and it was bending up my blades. It actually works better just like this. So this is the Lee Quick Trim deluxe uh the regularly quick trim just doesn't have this groove in it where these extra blades fit other than that they're the same these are the cutting blades and you use this along with a die for your specific case this is the die for 40 smith and wesson this holds the case in place and it sets the length and this will automatically trim it to the correct length you just lower the ram and you screw this they say to screw it all the way down until the knurling gets down to the threads, but I find when I do that, it tends to get hung and I end up having to take pliers to loosen it back up. So I, I get it down there close and then I back it off about a half a turn. It doesn't really make a difference. Then you put your case in and you raise it up inside there. And the ram may not go all the way up. That's fine. You just, you're going to hold a little bit of pressure on the arm while you're doing the trimming. And then this trimmer sits down inside there, sits down on top of the case. And then you see this little gap right here. That's the part you're cutting off to get it down to the right length. And this little knob is a click adjustment. You can adjust that uh, for about 10 thousandths of additional cutting depth. That's just to make up for any stack up tolerance. If you're doing a whole bunch of these, this, like I said, is probably pretty laborious. They make one of these models that instead of the knob, you can attach a drill to it, like a cordless drill, and do it that way. Um, I, I like this one because I don't have to worry about power um, and having, you know, drill charged or anything. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Plus, it's pretty inexpensive. <coughs> excuse me. This is how I trim my 223 brass back. Um, I just have to have a die for it. And then I had to buy this die for the uh, 40. So I already had the trimmer and I think it was like 30 bucks, 20 bucks, something like that. The, the die I got for, this is actually used die. It was like thir $13, something like that. I think new they're around 20. So this is a pretty effective and inexpensive way to trim brass. So, now all you do is you, you push down with a little bit of pressure and you just turn and it cuts and it, it doesn't cut a large amount at a time it just cuts little fine shavings 
and I'm trying to do this without shaking the table. My bench is secure, but my uh, shed out here, the floor is a little shaky, so um, that's why you're getting a little movement there. I'm trying to go nice and slow so I'm not jiggling the camera so much, but I just turned this, and as I'm turning it, this is going down. Every once in a while, I will lower the case and run it back in there just to knock shavings out of the way, and you can feel it cutting and you can feel when it bottoms out and quits cutting because it gets much easier to turn it's not hard to turn but there's no resistance at all when you get to the bottom so um i'm getting pretty close it's it's down there but i can still feel cutting going on so i'm going to keep going And it, it's good to clear those shavings every once in a while. And there. I just felt it got real easy right there. So we're done. We're not doing any more trimming at this point. So um, that's that. I'm going to pull the case out. And you can see. I'll try to move the camera around here. Bear with my. All right, sorry about that. I um, don't have great editing skills, people. Sorry. So um, the case is now trimmed. You can see all the shavings in there. Um, they're very fine little shavings. Uh, when it's cutting, it just shaves a little bit off. Um, it's a very fine cutting. And there you now. Now... That is a, for all intents and purposes, a 40 Smith & Wesson case now. Um, let me get my chamfer D virtual out and I'll do that next. All right, so our case is trimmed now. As you can see, there's some shavings on there. This um, cut surface is squared off and flat. We need to chamfer the inside of it a little bit to help the bullet go in. We need to get the shavings out and we need to get the burrs off the outside. There's a little burr right there. So uh, we're going to use a little uh, spaceship uh, chamfer and deburr tool. This is a bear, but there's a lot of companies that make these. They're pretty common. So you just put this inside there and you just kind of twist it a little bit. And that will chamfer the inside edge. Then, you take the other end and put it over it, and you twist it a little bit, and that will deburr it. And then, bang our shavings out, and now the case mouth is ready to accept a bullet. You can see that little chamfer on the inside, and it's smooth on the outside. There's no burrs, so um, this case is uh, ready to load now. I see one more little shaving in there I'll get out and uh, we will load this one more quick thing before we get into reloading there's my uh, little uh, uh, sizing tool from Lyman uh, gauge I was just going to show you quickly that this is properly sized now and length so um, you can see the uh, 40 Smith & Wesson hole Dr. Brass in it drops down nice and flush so it's perfectly sized now for 40 Smith & Wesson. Okay now my next die is my expander die. I am going to raise my ram all the way up and I'm going to screw in the expander die until it just touches the top of the shell holder. Then I'm going to lock it down and I'm going to take the expander plug and back it out. So what I'm going to do now is expand the case mount so it will accept the bullet and I'm also going to prime it because I prime on the press. So I'm going to get a primer ready. I'm using CCI large pistol primers for these because that's what I have. Put that in the uh, priming cup. I'm going to raise up the brass, push my arm in, lower the ram, and that seats the primer. So now the case is primed. 
Now I have to expand the case mount to accept a bullet. So I raise it all the way up and I screw in my plug until I feel it touch the case mount. And then I give it a couple of twists. Now what I'm going to do is lower it, screw it in about a quarter of a turn, and then raise it up. And now I'm going to check it. The bullets I'm using are um, Bayou Bullet, high tech coated, 180 grain, truncated cone. And, you know, they say you just want it to just barely sit in there. I, I tend to maybe expand these a little bit more with these high tech coated bullets or lead bullets because I don't want to shave um, the coating off when I seat the bullet. So uh, I'm going to turn this about another eighth of a turn and run it up. I'm going to lock this ring. If I were doing a whole bunch more bullets, it would just be set and I could do a bunch more, but I'm just doing this one for the video. And that's pretty good. It uh, just barely sits in there, but it does sit in there. And uh, so that's plenty of belling for that. So now we're done with that die. Okay, um, I saved you the uh, agony of having to watch me weigh this out. If I were doing a number of rounds, I'd use my powder thrower or a dipper. But since I'm only making one round this morning, I just got the scale out and weighed it. So I zeroed my scale, made sure it was level. I set it at 6.6 .6 grains. Now I'm using Hodgdon HS6 powder. I got my load data from Eggleston Munitions. They're another manufacturer of these high-tech coated bullets, and they offer uh, load sheets uh, for all of their bullets, and uh, they're pretty good. They actually get their information from Hodgson, if I believe is correct. Um, they they stated on the website. I'm kind of going from memory, but for the 40 Smith & Wesson, these 180-grain truncated cones, the powder range runs from 6.6 to 7.2, 7.3, something like that. Since I'm doing something different with these large primers and stuff, I'm working up a new load. I have been loading at the minimum of 6.6, .6, and I have found that to be a good load. I don't have a chronometer. I'm just going by feel, but it cycles my gun well. It's accurate, and... You know, it's got a manageable recoil. It feels good to me, so that's what I've been loading at, and I haven't felt the need to push it up any higher. Uh, so that's what we're going to load today. So I've got my powder weight out, got my case primed, case mouth belled, ready to go. I am going to slide the camera over just a hair. So I'm going to put my powder funnel over my case, and I'm going to take my powder and dump it in there, give it a couple taps. And now that case is charged and ready to go. What I always do is I check and double check and make sure that that powder is in there. Even though I'm just doing the one case, I always check and make sure. So. Okay, now my final die I'm going to set up is my bullet seating and crimp die. And some people will um, seat and then crimp in a separate step, which um, I actually do on when I load 45 because my gun's kind of fussy. But I have found with these 40 calibers, uh, I don't need to do that. I do them both in the same step, and it's not an issue. So that's the way I'm going to set this die up. It doesn't really matter because I'm only doing one case, but if you were doing a, a number of rounds, 100 rounds or something, it would make a big difference. So I'm going to set the die in here. I'm going to back the seating stem way up because I'm not worried about that right now what I'm setting is a crimp part up which is just the body of the die and I do not want it to crimp right now so I'm going to load in a case I'm going to run it up and I'm going to run that case run that die body down until I feel it make contact with the case mouth which it's doing right about there. So now I'm gonna back it up a little bit and lock it down because I don't want it touching the case mouth. I don't want it to do any crimping at this point. Then I'm gonna take that case back out of there and I'm gonna take my dummy round now. 
This is a dummy round that I've prepared. It's using, I do this for all the bullets that I load. I'll take one old case and make a dummy round out of it. This gives me the length that I want. And you can see it's not primed. There's no powder in this. I keep a jar of these for all the different bullets that I load. And the way you use the dummy round to set it up, it makes it a lot faster. You don't have to worry about the length. You just drop the dummy round in there, run it up, and then you screw the seating stem down until it comes in contact with the dummy round. Right there. And then I lock it down. Now that sets your length. So... Now I can make this round to that exact same length. I'm going to put my loaded case, my uh, prime case in here, powder charged, set the bullet in it, and now I'm going to run it up in there, and that will seat my bullet to the correct length. Hmm. See, same length as my dummy round. So now that's set. Now this is a complete bullet in that it will fire at this point, but I have not removed that belling from the case mount or crimped it. I, I don't really crimp these so much as I just remove the belling. Um, the way I do it is I use my gauge and I'll just crimp it a little bit at a time. And then once it drops in my gauge good, I know it's going to be good in my gun. That's with this gun. This is a Glock. It's very forgiving. Um, my other gun, my 45, I actually have to set those where it will drop in the barrel because uh, my uh, it'll drop in. I can make a round that will drop in the gauge, but it won't run in my gun. You have to load to your particular gun. So what I'm going to do now, Put it back in there and I'm going to back that seating stem up because I don't want to push the bullet in any further. And I'm going to loosen the die body. I'm going to run the case up in there, run the finished round up in there, I should say, and screw down the body. And you'll, you're, I'm hitting the case right now, so it's got some resistance to it. Um, I'm going to give it a couple more turns with resistance. I'm going to take it out and I'm going to try it at that point because I've, I've already actually crimped it a little bit. And for this, that's enough. I'm done. So if I were going to do a bunch more rounds, I've got my crimp where I want it. I'm going to run that bullet back up in there, and I'm going to lock this down. The reason I ran it back in there is to hold it in place. Otherwise, you go to twist it, you might twist the die a little bit, and that will hold the die firm. Now, I also want to reset my length again, because remember, I backed this out. So I'm going to screw this down until it touches it and then lock it and now that die is set so now if I was going to do another hundred rounds or so all I'd have to do is set the case and the bullet run it up and it would seat it and crimp it at the same time of course I'm done with it for now but I wanted to show you how to do it anyway okay so there's our completed 40 Smith & Wesson round using a cut down 10 millimeter case with the large primer and what I was doing to check the crimp is this is my case gauge this is a lineman you can see it's a multi-caliber gauge I take the 40 Smith & Wesson hole and I do a plunk test which is literally you just drop it and it plunks in easily it's slightly below flush it's not sticking up any and it drops out easily that tells me that will just cycle just fine in my gun and now I can go out and do some practice shooting using my large primers and not use up all my small ones so as you can see okay, it says 10 millimeter on it I guess if you were doing a ton of these or if you had a 10 millimeter maybe you'd want to mark the case or something somehow to differentiate it but I don't own a 10 millimeter 40s uh, the only thing I'm shooting close to this, so I don't have to worry about that. So that's it, folks. That's how to do uh, make a 40 Smith & Wesson round out of a cut-down 10-millimeter case. So I'm hoping that answers all your questions. And uh, I know there's a lot of new reloaders out there um, getting into it now with this uh, shortage of stuff. I see a lot of comments on the forum and stuff of people just getting into it first time and having frustration trying to find components and stuff all i can say is hang in there it'll get better 
hopefully in a few months stuff will come back on the market and then this is a very rewarding hobby and uh and that's the way i look at it as a hobby it's something to kill time for me that's why i'm not out here with the uh you know dylan press churning out thousands of rounds a week and stuff i don't shoot that much but um it's uh something that i enjoy doing and i think you will too so welcome to the sport and i hope some of my videos might help you so god bless you all have a great day